Hello, St. Michael's parishioners and friends. Father Braun here with another fireside chat as we near the end of our second week, beginning the first week, that is, beginning our second week of Lent. I want to highlight, though, as we begin the second week of Lent, Father Kyle Metzger, our former parochial vicar who served here about three years ago, he will be offering this parish mission. And he's entitled the parish mission, What is God's Native Language? Because I don't understand what he's telling me. It's a good title. Um, and something I think all of us perhaps have found ourselves trying to understand God's message to us. So begin though, let us offer a, a prayer to our Blessed Mother, asking for her prayers, intercession for all of us in our families, uh, especially those who have um, left the church or have wandered away, that God's grace might draw them back through her prayers. So we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So again, just want to encourage us to make time for that parish mission this week, beginning Sunday night, and then Monday and Tuesday night as well, with Father Kyle Metzger. Um, one need not have to tell us why that's important, um, you know, to belabor that message. In a world where our minds and our eyes and our ears are filled up with the culture around us because of the, the instant contact with the media world, we need to set aside time to let God's message speak to us, not just through videos and, and messages that we can get on the internet, as wonderful and as important as they are, but to hear it from someone who's speaking to us from a pulpit, to come and worship Christ on Sunday Mass, to hear his word spoken um, through others. Uh, so please, uh, make an effort to do that this week. Just a short, quick word about the gospel today. Uh, it's Friday, and the gospel's message was our Lord's telling us to be sure that we um, don't carry any bitterness in our hearts towards anyone. Uh, resentment can lead to trouble down the road. Unforgiveness. He talked about before you come and offer your gift at the altar, first go and make peace with your brother before you come and offer your altar gift. And he said, if not, you'll be taken to the judge and the judge will hand you over to the jailer and you'll be put in jail until you paid the last penny. As uncomfortable as purgatory may seem for Catholics at even, and certainly for the modern world, it's a reality, it's in scripture. That whole last line is a subtle reference of the Holy Spirit until you paid the last penny, meaning we don't necessarily get to heaven if we have not let go of grudges in our hearts, if we've not let go of bitter judgments and, and discontent and hate for someone, those things are wounds in our soul that have to be healed if we carry them to our grave. We can't step over into pure love, into a kingdom of love with bitterness in our heart. So purgatory is something we can count on as a wonderful place where God is gonna continue to help heal our souls if we've not made those efforts to let God's grace begin to heal us now, if we're not praying, if we're not worshiping, if we're not opening ourselves up to the grace of God in the sacraments, then how can God begin to heal? Because we can't do it on our own. Our culture, we should know by now, is finding that out. No matter what the good intentions of any political party, no matter how hopeful and optimistic we sound with our scientific progress and technology, the human heart is still wounded. Just look this past summer and you can see that. Um, so please, my brothers and sisters, I want to encourage us, Lent is a time to make an extra effort, not so much to earn heaven and to work our way into heaven by being more rigorous in our disciplines and our penance, but to let God in, in the midst of a world that's just constantly bombarding us, to let God in to let him speak to our hearts, to let his spirit dwell in our soul, to let him reorientate our values, to let him be our Lord and Savior. Let's close with a prayer to St. Joseph, um, just simply a spontaneous prayer this year of St. Joseph. And again, our parish will be consecrating ourselves, our parish, along with our bishop, consecrating the diocese and our parish to St. Joseph on March 19th, his feast day. And so we pray, St. Joseph, you cared for your wife, Mary, and your foster son, Jesus. 
with great love and tenderness, with strength and courage. He went through many trials to help watch over him. May you continue to watch over his church, your son's church. You are the patron of the universal church. We ask your intercession to help all of us in a wounded church, in a time of trial and, and struggle, to wake up and come back to your son, your foster son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, take care, everyone. Hope to see you on Sunday night, Monday or Tuesday. Please do not worry about that COVID. I know we are. I know there's cause to be worried. But there's something called irrational fear that can take hold of our world. And I think it's maybe doing that in some respects. By the way, I've had both my COVID shots. So if you don't see me with a mask, just understand that I've had my shots and I know that people are saying, hey, maybe we still need to keep wearing a mask. Well, maybe we have to wear it until we get into the casket someday. Not to be too facetious, but I suppose maybe that's where we can take our mask off. Again, I'm being facetious. But our Lord God loves us. And we've done plenty of good precaution and done real well in fighting this. And so not to let that fear keep us from coming to those opportunities to grow in grace. Amen. God bless. Bye-bye.